Hello, this is a lecture video on um, Section 2.3, Question 9, which deals with a flight that someone's taking from JBLM <clears throat> or the Joint Base Lewis McCord uh, base here in Washington to an undisclosed location. Let's go ahead and overview the question first. So the question is, you're flying from JBLM uh, to an undisclosed location with, <clears throat> uh, with this criteria. It's 64 kilometers south and 198 kilometers east. As you're flying along, you know that Mount Rainier is approximately 56 kilometers east and 40 kilometers south of JBLM, where you're, uh, where you're starting your flight. If you're flying at a constant speed of 800 kilometers an hour, how long after you depart JBLM will you be the closest to Mount Rainier? Well, <clears throat> since both locations are relative to JBL JBLM, where we're starting, we're going to set that to our origin. And that means our undisclosed location, our destination, if you would, is going to be up 198 and negative 64 to represent east and south accordingly on a coordinate plane. And Mount Rainier would also have uh, that similar reasoning where it would be at 56, negative 40. So it would look like this. So <clears throat> we are going to be flying between these two blue coordinates, and we want to know how far into that flight are we going to be closest to the green dot there? The strategy for this is very similar to uh, example 5, which is on page 135 of the textbook. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and talk about the strategy first. So what we need to do is we need to construct a line so that way we know what our flight path looks like here. I'm going to call that the blue line because it's connecting the blue coordinates together. And then we need to figure out what the line that's perpendicular to the flight path to the blue line is, which is going to be a green line because it's we'll, we'll have to go through the green point there. <clears throat> this will help establish the shortest distance since it is perpendicular to that line. And then we need to figure out what's the intersection between that green line and the <clears throat> and the blue line. So what is what is the point on that flight path that gives us the shortest distance where we are closest to <clears throat> um, to uh, Mount Rainier or the green coordinate? Desmos will do this for us, uh, so I won't go into that um, as much as the rest of it, uh, but, but we can certainly talk about how to do that if you are interested. The next thing we need to do is we need to figure out well, what is the distance between JBLM, where we start our flight, until we get to that intersection, which will tell us the distance, right? So once we find that, it'll know, well, how far have we flown in order to get to that shortest distance between uh, from the flight path to Mount Rainier. And then we're going to use this formula, d equals r times t, and then solve it for t to figure out how long it is. One thing to note is in the message box for this, it gives it in minutes, but notice that our uh, rate is in hours, so we're going to have to convert that over to minutes to make it work. So most of the work is going to be simply figuring out the distance for this, and then once we've got that sort it out, we're going to have to use R, which is 800 kilometers an hour. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is construct a line from JBLM mm -hmm. to our destinations. So we need to get a blue line, so to speak, here for our flight path. Now, the coordinates we're going to use, again, are going to be the origin, 0, 0, and 198, negative 64. Mount Rainier, this other coordinate, we're not going to use yet. So... <clears throat> That flight path is going to be a line, so we are going to use our slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and we are going to plug in the coordinates for JBLM and the undisclosed location or destination there. Um, doesn't matter which order you choose, as long as it's vertically stacked, you should be good to go. And we can simplify this to negative 64 over 198 or negative 32 over 99. So our slope is going to be some negative 32 99 and our equation is going to be negative 32 over 99x plus 0. So we already know what our y-intercept is because JBLM is at the origin. So that gives us our y-intercept. So instead of plus 0, we can keep it as just negative 32 99x. <clears throat> so 
And that's our first step here. It's going to look like this. <clears throat> and our flight is going to kind of move along through here. So we, we don't really care about the line, so to speak. We want that segment in between there as well. So this is what we have so far. And what we need to do is we need to figure out a line that's perpendicular to it, which is why I've constructed that here for us um, <clears throat> already. Now, what we mean by uh, shortest distance, the shortest distance from... Uh, from a segment or from a point to another would be one that forms a 90 degree angle um, with it. So in order to calculate that, we need to know the slope of one line and then we can translate it into the other. The way that it's done has a couple of phrases with it. The one I'm going to use today is the negative reciprocal. So whatever our slope is, whichever one we start with, the line perpendicular to it would have an opposite value, so instead of positive, it would be negative, and then it would be the reciprocal of it. So, um, if <clears throat> we had, uh, if if we had something like that, we would change the sign and then flip it. That's essentially what we're doing. So that line that's going to end up being our shortest distance is going to be uh, one that has to have that slope and it has to go through our green dot there. Uh, Mount Rainier at 56, negative 40. So this is what our blue line is, negative 32, 99 X. And what we're going to do is we're going to change it from positive to negative, and then we're going to flip it. So instead of 32 over 99, we'll have 99 over 32. So we know that we have some line uh, like this that is going to go um, between... <clears throat> um, that, that's going to have to form that right there. And the reason why I have the video on there is I want you to see that it, it is a right angle and we have a whole bunch of possibilities. So with <clears throat> our uh, slope defined, now we need to figure out the one that'll get us right to uh, that coordinate there. So we want to be able to get the one that's going to go through Mount Rainier. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do that. We're going to plug in the coordinate for Mount Rainier, where 56 is what goes in for our input, and negative 40 is what we put in for our output. I chose y and x, or x and y respectively, because we're used to seeing that with linear equations, but we're not bound by those variables. We could, we could choose whichever to represent a line. And this is what we can use to figure out what specific uh, line would get us uh, so it's both perpendicular and go through that point. Now that 99, 30 seconds and 56 is what I'm going to have to combine together. I went ahead and multiplied it together and reduced it. So we're going to end up with 693 fourths. And since that's a ridiculous number, I changed it to the mixed number 173 and 1 fourth. We'll subtract that over, which is going to make it negative 213 and 1 fourth. So our y-intercept our vertical intercept, if you would, is going to have to have that negative 2, 13, and 1 fourth. Uh, so in order for this to play, we would need to have that coordinate right, oops, sorry, right there. So as we move along, we want the one that's approximately right there. And we can kind of see that that's roughly going to be past negative 200 there. This is what it would actually look like, just in case I missed it, right? So, so that is going to be the segment that will give us the shortest distance uh, between Mount Rainier and our flight path with it. In <clears throat> Desmos, I can click on that intersection point, and it tells me what that intersection point is. But if I didn't have that, I would essentially set those lines equal to each other and then <clears throat> solve for x or y respectively. So you'll end up with this. I'm going to go ahead and use this, which is why I ask in the question for you to have it solved to three decimal places. Uh, because when you click on the intersection point, it gives it in th uh, three decimal places. Uh, but you could certainly go further than that than that and get a more accurate uh, accurate answer. The key to it is making sure that you, you don't continually round it because you'll end up further and further away from your answer as you move along. We'll see that impact as we continue the question here. So again, here's our question. This is what we figured out so far where we've constructed the line. We've figured out what... Uh, the line perpendicular to it's going to be, which is our shortest distance, and then we found the intersection that's 62.409.
What we need to do now is we need to find the distance between that intersection point, 62.409 and negative 20.173, and the origin. That'll tell us the distance traveled. It'll give us the length of that piece of it. <clears throat> and then once we have that distance, we're going to use our formula D equals RT in order to figure out how long that is to solve for T. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So if we're talking about distance here. These are our two pieces that we really need. And the distance formula is this. So I'm going to plug in those, uh, those coordinates into this uh, formula, and I'm going to end up getting things that are kind of further away. So the second I square those things, I'm going to end up with numbers that are going to be bigger. So again, I would caution you to estimate it at three decimal points here. I would not. I would save these variables. I would do something like put in the whole expression negative 62.409 squared plus 20.173 to get this, uh, 4,301.883322. So it doesn't stop there. It continues going past that place. So again, I want to caution estimating it through there. Get Keep exact answers as you're doing this problem. And then again, when we do uh, the square root of it, we'll get 65.58836 is where I stopped at 5, which is where I traditionally uh, stop rounding my answers. Again, this is kilometers because we know that all of the points on this grid are in kilometers. <clears throat> so now that we know that that segment of it from JBLM to that intersection point uh, is 65.58 kilometers, now we're going to figure out how do we how do we fig how do we use that information with our velocity, with knowing that our speed is 800 kilometers an hour. So we're going to use that as well as our rate in order to figure out how long. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we are going to take our formula D equals RT and then solve it for T by dividing R over. We're going to plug in D and R respectively into this. And then the key here is making sure we manage our values and our units of measure with it. So I'm going to take the values and put them on the side. So that's going to be my 65.588 divided by 800. And then that kilometer in the numerator is going to be uh, multiplied by, instead of kilometers per hour, that'll flip, since that's in the denominator, into hours over kilometers. Those kilometers will cancel out, leaving me with just hours. And then that 65.588 over 800 reduces to 0 0.08199. So this tells me how many hours it is. But that's a ridiculous unit of time, so we're going to answer it in minutes, which is what the question calls for. So I'm going to take those hours, and since I know there are 60 minutes in an hour, I'm going to essentially multiply our 0 0.08199 by 60, and then I'm going to cancel out those hours on top and bottom, leaving just minutes. So how long will it take? It'll take 4.919 minutes, just shy of five minutes, uh, for us to uh, start our flight at JBLM to get to the closest we'll be on Mount Rainier. This was a big problem. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you're doing well. Have a good day.